Hey, so I want to talk to you about something we've been working on for a little bit, which is distributed fractional indexing in SQLite, or conflict-free fractional indexing in SQLite. Uh, so what is fractional indexing? It's the idea that you want to allow your users to provide a user-defined ordering to something. So maybe you have a bunch of items in a list, and they should be able to drag items in the list to reorder stuff. And fractional indexing lets you do this without having to touch any other row except the row that was moved. So if I have items one, two, three in a list, and I want to move item three between one and two, um, then item three would get the ordering 1.5. So that's where the fractional part comes in, since 1.5 is the fraction between uh, one and two. And it's nice, so you didn't have to update items one and two, you only updated item three to change its order to be 1.5. But there's some drawbacks with this approach. Um, there's limited precision. So if you continuously divide the same spot in half over and over again, you'll run out of precision after around 54 divisions. And the other issue is if users are making changes while offline, creating a bunch of items, um, and they all come back online, well, they could have assigned two different items the same position. So maybe I give item A position one, you give item B position one, we merge, and now say somebody comes along, they want to insert something between A and B, they want to insert C between A and B. Well, they can't do that because A has position one, B has position one, and there's no space between one and one. So we've added some extensions to SQLite to um, help support this and resolve those sorts of conflicts. So let's see how that works. All right, so first we're going to load our extension. And then we're going to create a basic to-do list table, since everybody's kind of familiar with that. It's going to have the primary key, the list ID, so the to-do list it's a part of, uh, the ordering column, so this would be a column for a fractional index, and then the content of the to-do. And then for completeness, we're going to create an index of our list ID and ordering, so the list and then the order of the items in the list. And now, so yeah, we just have a basic regular table, nothing fancy, but here's where things change. So we have this thing as ordered, and this is going to update your to-do table to be uh, a managed fractional index. So the first argument is the name of the table, the second argument is the column the order by, and the following arguments are the columns that comprise the list. So in this case, just list ID. And we can just select all from to do just to see if there's nothing there right now. Looks good. And let's see how this works. So we're going to insert into our to do item ID one, list ID one. And we're going to give it order one. I'll tell you how that works in a second. And we're going to call it item one. Okay. So when you insert into a table that has been updated to a fractional index. Um, there's two special values for order. You can give the order value one, which means append to the list. You can give it negative one, which means prepend to the list. And if you want to insert anywhere, any arbitrary point in the list, I'll show you how to do that uh, later. So let's insert item one, insert item two, and let's see that that worked. Cool. So we see we have both items. Item one was first and two second because we appended to the list twice. And then we see the ordering column was automatically generated for us. So what this is, is an encoding of the fractional index. Um, so it's infinite precision and it's encoded in a compact format. Um, you can check out the Figma has published a great article and an observable notebook on how, that's, how this is implemented. So you can check that out later. Cool. So let, I talked about, you can also insert arbitrary points. So how does that work? Well, something that's created behind the scenes for you is a sort of virtual table, which is your table name underscore fract index. And it has all the same columns as your base table, except this new one, or a set of new ones, which is after underscore. So after underscore, and then your primary key column or columns. So if you have one primary key, it's just after underscore your primary key column. If you have multiple columns in your primary key, you'll have one after column per column there. And this just lets you specify what row are you inserting after. So I can say I want to insert item three, item ID three for list ID one, 
I'm going to call it 1.5 because I'm going to want to insert after item 1, so between 1 and 2. Cool, let's see that. And now we see our items are correctly ordered, and this got the index between 1 and 2. And this also works for updates. So you can run your update as well against the virtual table. And you can say, oh, I want to move something after ID 2. So we're going to move something to the end of the list. We're going to change its content to the last item. So this is going to be last. And specify in the where clause what we want to move. So we want to move ID 3 to be after ID 2 and change its content to last item. And there we go. And the orders are updated correctly. Cool. So the last problem I mentioned is that people could be offline making changes, assigning the same order to different items, and then come online, merge those changes, and now you need to be able to somehow sort between items that have the same uh, same order. So let me show you how that would work. What we're going to do is we're going to insert item ID 4. We're going to insert it at the same ordering as another item, so it conflicts with item Two. Um, so if you provide your own ordering on an insert, we'll just accept it. Um, if you don't insert into the virtual table or use the special values for prepend and append, which is useful in this case, so I can uh, show you the conflicting case. So let's select. All right, we see we have item two and conflicted using the same indice for their ordering. Now, if somebody wants to Go ahead and insert. Okay, so we're going to insert a new item between 2 and 4, so after ID 2. So what the extension does behind the scenes, it finds this conflict on insert and moves things around to make space and inserts a new thing. And this is also guaranteed to converge since everybody's going to do the same rule for resolving a conflict. And you're only ever fixing a conflict locally on your own local change. Um, so it kind of follows the same semantics as like a last right wins with respect to the orders when you then merge with other peers for orderings. Cool. So this will be in a stable release uh, by the end of the week. And then the next things we're working on is automatic migrations. So after you have your you know, database schemas deployed to clients and devices, and you need to change, make changes to your apps or schema, you can automatically migrate your users. And then after that, we'll be rewriting VL, or be rewriting strut.io um, to be working on top of CR SQLite or Vulkan as a, you know, tech demo to show you how all these things work. Thanks.